Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the Church Renewal podcast from Flourish Coaching. Flourish sets ministry leaders free to be effective wherever God has called them. And when pastors and churches feel stuck, Flourish's coaches refresh their hope in the gospel and help them clarify their strategy. I'm your host, Alan Edwards, uh, Director of Operations at Flourish. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about churches as embassies of the kingdom of Jesus. Many churches get stuck when they put their hope in cultural clout that Christianity used to have. They think that if they just do church better than the other churches in their area, that they'll revitalize or grow. But doesn't that mentality just shuffle Christians from one church to the next? Can the institutional model or just doing church better bring about real renewal to our congregations? You know, we'd love to hear what you think on this topic. So please weigh in on Twitter at Flourish Coach One or find us on Facebook at Flourish Coaching. Uh, you can also email me at alan at flourishcoaching.org or visit the site flourishcoaching.org. Today, Matt Bowling, our executive director, is going to join us to talk about churches as the embassies of Christ's kingdom. So come on, let's dig in and explore how Jesus is renewing his church. All right, Matt, welcome back to the Church Renewal Podcast. How are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. Fantastic. Um, so the topic today, the, the big idea is that for churches to be renewed, they need to, to regain that sense that the church is an embassy of the kingdom of Jesus, that we as members of the church are ambassadors of Jesus. So this sounds like hoity-toity, hoi polloi stuff, right? Oh, yeah. oh, I am an ambassador of Jesus. Uh, what, do, what do we mean when we talk about the church as an embassy or Christians as ambassadors of Jesus? So we're picking up on a theme that Paul gives us in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, and really what Paul's trying to say in 2 Corinthians is trying to give an orientation to the Corinthians about how they should think about themselves and their relationship um, to the world. So you're in the same passage where Paul's talking about the fact that, well, the Matt translation of it is, it's better to be dead. Dead? Uh, dead. Okay. Paul essentially says, it's better to be dead. However, if because if you're dead, you can go be with Jesus. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's better to be dead. Right. But if you're going to be alive, think about your being alive in Christ and still in the world in a certain way. And the certain way is that God's posture in that passage in 2 Corinthians 5 is that he is seeking to reconcile people to himself through his son. And the way that people hear that message is through us, is through Christians. Sure. Um, I, I grew up uh, as an unbeliever. I grew up with parents that were wonderful and loving and a very stable growing up experience, but it was not in the church. In my own life, it was Christians who took this responsibility seriously that led me to coming to the Lord. In fact, it always happens that way. How do people come to faith in Christ? Someone tells them the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the Christians around me growing up took that responsibility seriously. They thought about themselves as ambassadors of the king, as people sent by the king with a message to speak, a herald of good news. Yeah. And so the church, if, if Christians are to think of themselves as ambassadors, then the church is the embassy. Right. It's, the, it's the place they come back to for equipping, for, um, for training, uh, for uh, re-energizing, for encouragement to be sent back out as ambassadors into right. the world Monday through Saturday, roughly, right. roughly speaking. Right. So if I'm um, if I'm a German citizen and I enter an American embassy, I'm really entering foreign territory. Mm -hmm. I I'm I'm entering a place that is sovereignly not German but American. Right. And I'm going to get a taste of American culture there. Yes, right? absolutely. So if you sit down for a meal or you right. see what the customs are or how they right. speak. or yeah. Not not that the American ambassador to Germany isn't going to make Wiener Schnitzel occasionally. Occasionally. But, yeah. Um, so, but he's going to have Thanksgiving at the embassy. Right. Yes. Right? So, when, so when our local churches lose sight of the fact that they are embassies of the kingdom. Right. And people come into them, they brush up against them, they interact with them. What, what does it look like when a church has lost sight 
of the privilege it is to be an embassy of King Jesus. I think that the primary thing that you lose is that people don't have the right fundamental orientation to their lives. Okay. What do you mean? So if if the reason that today dawned is because Jesus is yet gathering a people and using us to do it. Um, so I, I get that from Matthew 24, 14, that says, when the gospel has gone out, Matt translation, when the gospel has gone out to everybody, the end comes. Mm-hmm. So I ask people, did the end come today? Oh, yeah. No. Nope, did the end yet. come today, Ellen? I mean, we are recording this ahead. So we are. That's true. So, <laughs> so if if you are listening to this during the apocalypse, <laughs> then just you have heads other up, to worry about. Just well, no, I mean, you know, start listening to the trumpet and go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But anyway, okay, yeah. But for us today, as we record, the end has not come. The end has not come. Which tells us that uh, as Alan and I go about the rest of our days, um, we go from here right, from our recording, that fundamentally our orientation is, I'm an ambassador of the king. Mm -hmm. I've been sent with good news to speak to people because he's gathering a people and he's using people like me to do it. Yeah. And a church that has lost that fundamental orientation, um, the way that I like to put it is that they've become more concerned about us than about them. Oh, okay. So we end up with this inward orientation of the church and people thinking that the church is there to satisfy their needs instead of the church being there to equip them so they can go out and they can help people with their spiritual needs. Right. So again, to go back to our our American ambassador to Germany. Right. Our American ambassador to Germany doesn't go to Germany to live his best American life on the grounds of the embassy. Right. He would be he would be um, off mission if he didn't bring American culture and values and ideas and the message of our government to bear in the lives of Germans. That's Absolutely. the job of the ambassador. Yes. We're using this word privilege that the that church renewal is the process by which the people and the congregation have a renewed sense of their privilege as ambassadors. Why do we call that a privilege? Yeah, sometimes I get, I've gotten hassled for using that word. Sometimes people don't like that word because we think about, um, especially in American culture as it is right now, that people that have privileges, that's bad. And um, some people have privileges, some people don't. Um, we're using it in a different sense of the word, which is that I have an internal sense that it's unbelievable to, unbelievable to me that God would have me and his family and give me the opportunity to speak the best news that's ever been spoken to anybody, to the people around me. Yeah. And so I have this very humbled sense um, that I have been given a, a wonderful opportunity to serve the one who made everything from nothing and is reconciling people to himself. And he's using people like me to do it. Yeah. And so it humbles me. Yeah. And, I, and I've been given an honor that I yeah. don't deserve. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I that's get to so represent di- the best person that's ever been. Yeah. That's right? such a different mentality than like the bunker mentality that so many of us walk around with. I'm a Christian. The world's against me. Oh, no. Doom and gloom. But but really, uh, I have been I have this awesome privilege. I get to represent Jesus and my congregation, my church gets to represent the culture of the new heavens and new earth. Here and now. We get to give people a foretaste of it. Yeah. Right? So talk about that foretaste. What would it describe it for us? What would it look like if a church has been pursuing renewal in the gospel and and an unbeliever comes in and this church is really honoring, is really moved by that privilege of being an embassy of Jesus. Unchurched, de-churched guy is going to walk into that potluck or whatever What's going to be in the atmosphere? What's it going to feel like? What's he going to see that tells him this is an embassy of another kingdom? Uh, I mean, I think a lot of things. But one of them, the primary one would be the single marker that Jesus said would identify his people becomes evident to them. Okay. So they would bump in. The ideal world is that a a non-Christian bumps into a group of Christians. It could be a small group. It could be a family. It could be a church, uh, a whole congregation. But they bump into a small group. And as as the non-believer looks at the group of Christians, they go, wow, they really love each other and me. Mm. And so that people feel, um, 
accepted. This is a place where broken people can come and it's okay to be broken mm. and not perfect, to yeah. not have to put on uh, a happy face. Yeah. It's okay to be sad, but there's really a deep joy too, even for people that are sad. Yeah. Um, I had an experience last night. I had the opportunity to to um, spend a little bit of time with uh, an older gentleman that I've known for, um, golly, almost 20 years, uh, who recently lost his wife. And um, it, he said, well, I, 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 uh, I said to him how sorry I was for his loss. And he said, well, all of us have to go at some point. And um, there was not a bitterness to him at all. There was a real genuine joy in the midst of likely what's the most difficult thing that's ever happened to him, losing his wife of, I don't know, 60 years, probably. And um, there's a beauty about that, that for people that are living in a culture where there's a lot of damage, there's a lot of trauma, to walk into Christians that can look at the most difficult things and, and say, yes, that's true. It's sad. You're right. This is not the way the world's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But God. Yeah. God has sent Jesus. Yeah. The person who's most affected by your grief is not you. Yeah. But by the Father. It's the reason that he gave up his son because he is so committed to taking away all sorrow and tears. He's so committed he gave up his only son. Jesus is so committed to taking away the pain that the world is experiencing. That he took on flesh forever. Mm -hmm. That's how committed he is to it. Yeah. And the Spirit comes and gives us comfort. He's the God of all comfort, we're told. It's one of the names the Spirit's given. So we, we come to people who are experiencing the brokenness of the world. And if we ourselves are experiencing the gospel in that way, and we're blown away by it, then we radiate that to people. And that's... Uh, attractive in the best sense. Mm -hmm. It's attractive not because we put on some snappy program that people want it. It's attractive because people are like, oh, that gospel thing, it actually works in the real life of people. Yeah. Could I have some of that? Sure. And then we get a different kind of opportunity with people. Right, right. So that was a long answer. No, that's question. okay. That's okay. Because I think what a lot of people are looking for in terms of strengthening and uh, revitalizing their churches or renewing their churches is, is okay, what programs do we need to add? I just saw on Facebook, a, a group I'm part of with a bunch of pastors of smaller churches. You know, one guy asked, how do I begin to grow my church? And the first thing, like the first four responses were start a youth program, start a youth program, start a youth program. But what you're talking about, Matt, is not a, a particular program you're talking about a changed mentality, a changed understanding. You used a fundamental reorientation. Yeah. So so how does that fundamental reorientation affect, we call it program, call it whatever you like, but how does that affect the stuff we do as a church? So if I'm a pastor and and I want to reorient my church away from us and toward them, mm -hmm. away from bunker mentality and toward privilege to be an ambassador of Jesus mentality. What is what is something that, that I do today? What is something that I change today is in my Sunday school, in my preaching, um, in the way I'm interacting with my elders? If I'm a pastor, what's something I change today to kind of reorient my 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 congregation uh, toward the privilege of being an ambassador of Jesus? So I think there's a lot of ways that you could do that. I think that one of the ways um, that, that Flores tries to help people do that is to, to regain a curiosity about the community. Okay. So a lot of churches want to start some kind of outreach in the community, right? They, they want to do something in the community. And that is a really a great way to begin the orientation of moving people to, um, to have an equal emphasis in the church on the forces that pull inward in terms of fellowship and discipleship and that push outward in terms of outreach and evangelism, mm -hmm. right? And so we're part of church renewal is trying to re-equalize those forces okay. so that they're, they have equal ultimacy, right. right? But one of them is just to become curious about your community again, mm. right? And so that curiosity about your community, we talk about, um, we try and help people get a vision for reflecting their zip code. 
Okay. So yeah. do you know your zip code? Yeah. Do you know what the breakdown of it is? Do you, do you know who lives there? Do you know what the struggles are of people sure. in your zip code? What do they celebrate? How do they eat? Who, who who do they cheer for? Hopes, fears, and dreams. Yeah. There's a Keller line. Yep. Hopes, fears, Does and Tim dreams. Does Tim Keller get a nickel every time we drop a Keller line in this Absolutely. podcast? Absolutely. Good. It's fascinating. We're recording this podcast in uh, Westmoreland County, which is the it's the county just to the east of Allegheny County where Pittsburgh is located. Um, and I lived here as a pastor for almost six years. And whenever I come back here, you realize that Pittsburgh has its own culture that's very distinctive. Sure. And so you listen on the radio and the old Pittsburgh Steelers are the ones who do the ads on the radio, right? And so I think that what we're trying to do is become curious again about our place, to not assume that we know it, but to look for, and here's what you're looking for. You're particularly looking for the emotional cracks. The emotional cracks. Right. So this is something I learned from George Hunter and uh, the Apostolic Congregation, but um and don't let the title scare you. It's a very insightful book. Um, but uh, one of the things that he talks about is where are the places where people are experiencing transition or emotional challenge? These are the people whom God in his providence has already worked in their lives to make them reconsider that what they believe may be insufficient for what they're struggling with. Okay. So if you can if you can find in your zip code, in your community, where are the people that are experiencing stress or struggle or emotional distress and you minister to them, mm-hmm. right? You seek to minister to them. Like for, mm-hmm. I'll give you, for example, can I give you an example? Sure. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't quite understand until I'd studied this more, how insightful um, it was uh, for Rick Warren's church Saddleback to start the ministry, celebrate recovery, mm. like AA, um, you know, right. it's been for years and years, right? And works with people that that have a difficulty with them um, with addiction to alcohol, right? Abuse of alcohol. Well, why would celebrate recovery be an insightful ministry to start? Maybe one of the most insightful, a grief share, divorce care, the, these kinds of ministries. Why would that be? Well, it's people that are already experiencing that their current worldview, their current belief system, can't support, can't help them with the struggle that they have. Mm. And when we get to know our community in such a way that we know that, Mm -hmm. right now we can tune what we do in terms of outreach to minister to those people in a way that is helpful to them. We know how to go after preaching the gospel to them. When you look at all through the book of Acts and even in the letters, you look at all the different ways that Paul took the same message of the gospel, but where he started and how he went about it, was based on the needs of the people and where they were. Mm -hmm. And when we know the people better, we know how to bring the gospel to them better. We know how to be ambassadors. And we also know how to be as an embassy to train our people to proclaim the gospel Mm. in a distinctive way that fits the hopes and fears and dreams of the people in our community, the people in our community. neighborhood. So I just heard you mention George Hunter's, the new apostolic congregation, the the apostolic congregation, apostolic congregation. As we close up our time today, are there other things that you would recommend for pastors or for anyone in the church to shape their thinking, um, to help them see themselves as an ambassador of Christ, to help them see the church, uh, as having this privilege of of being an embassy of King Jesus. Here's a couple. Um, One of the, I'm doing some doctoral work right now with a a professor named Gary McIntosh has written quite a number of books that we'll recommend through time for different kinds of issues. Um, But the very good book that's helpful in terms of um, how are people coming to know Christ today so that you can think about it for your church? It's a book called Growing God's Church. Um, and don't be scared by that idea of growth. Um, Jesus <laughs> dawns today because there are people still to be added to his church. Um, and so you you will find through our podcast that we're um, not church growth in the worst sense of it, but we're very much for kingdom expansion, which involves new people coming to Christ and being discipled in him. Um, some uh, some other resources, some uh, ministry friends um, with a group called Turnaround Pastors uh, have 
published an essay called Getting Off the Evangelism uh, Plateau. Um, and I think that that is a really great resource that we're, we love to make available. And then Tim Challies has an article um, that's very good in distinguishing between outreach and evangelism. So there's a lot of people that will do things with unbelievers in the community and call it evangelism, but that's not really true. Um, outreach puts us in contact with people that don't know Jesus. Evangelism doesn't happen until we actually proclaim the gospel to them. Mm, sure. And so that's important that we do we do both of those. Yeah. Outreach is putting an embassy in a foreign country. Evangelism is leaving the embassy and getting to know the people in that country. And speaking. And the speaking word of the, the word to them. The message that you've been sent with. Yeah. Right. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for joining us today on the Church Renewal Podcast. Um, it's My been pleasure. fun to think about this. This is fun to think about this stuff. My pleasure. Did you go to Chick-fil-A this morning? I did. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Hey, you've been listening to the Church Renewal Podcast from Flourish Coaching. We'd love to hear your thoughts on embassies of King Jesus, on outposts of the kingdom, on the privilege of being an ambassador. You can reach out to us over email. Uh, Matt's at matt at flourishcoaching.org. And I'm Alan, A-L-L-A-N, at flourishcoaching.org. You can also find us on Facebook at Flourish Coaching or on the web, flourishcoaching.org. Thanks for listening to the Church Renewal Podcast. There is only one fully sufficient reason that today dawned. Jesus is still gathering a people to himself and using us to do it. So come along and join us as we dig into the ways that Jesus is renewing his church.